IFC materials. Everything in the built environment is made from a physical raw material resource. Let's go to the IFC geometry sub panel and the scene properties and then scroll down and look for IFC materials. And so here we will we'll click on IFC material and on this little load materials button. Let's make this a wee bit bigger. A wee bit bigger. And then let's look at the materials we have. So a material might be 100 millimeter core filled block or 140 millimeter filled block. These are under a category called block. We may have some bricks, some concrete. This is some C3540 for our slabs. And if we look at this, yeah, we got a lot of slabs and a lot of concrete columns with the same material. And so when you look at all these materials, you may wonder, what is it good for except for selecting things? Well, materials can be used for different purposes, such as life cycle analysis, energy simulations, parametric design, procurement planning, and a lot of other things that I'm probably missing. So let's take a look at this a little bit closer by inspecting objects. So a material can be assigned directly to an object or an object type. So let's select this door and go to the object properties. And here we'll scroll down and we'll see that we have no materials. That's too bad. What about this door? Yes, this door has some materials and it's an inherited material, which means it's applied on the object type. And what material is it? It's the red oak and the red oak was part of our wood. Now, there are other cases where a material may be assigned to a layer set. For example, um, we'll take this uh, slab here and we'll scroll down again. And here we see it's part of a material layer set usage because we're using this. Okay, so it, this has one layer only of C3540 concrete and it's 0 0.2 meters thick, which is 200 millimeters thick. We could edit this out and if we were to do it, let's say, well, we can add layers and I won't add a layer. I'll just make this 0 0.1 and you'll notice when we click on save that our slab will become thinner and now we'll put it back as to where it was so this is why i'm saying it can change some parametric stuff now a material can also have property sets this does not have any Ooh, la la let's take this water example i know it has a property set because i did it no, it doesn't. Oh, there it is. I've seen material property sets. It's a P set material water. It has a pH level of 7.5 and an alkalinity concentration of 90. I hear this is the uh, recommended values for a swimming pool. Let's now look at a uh, material constituent set uh, and that could be a window so a window and we'll go to the object properties again scroll down 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 and here we see that our window is made up of uh, an inherited window set and the window set is well there is a bug here so what I'm going to do is um, toggle the type and then under the type here, we can see the material constituent set is named window set and it has a frame and it has a glass material. 
that constitutes this set. And then there is another type of material thingy, which is called a material profile set. Okay, so that's for things like um, beams and columns. And in here, you'll see that we have a, a profile. And that profile is basically an I... Well, it's not an I-beam, is it? It's... Let's... No, it's, a, it's an area... And that area has two dimensions, the x and y dimensions. And this is why we have a square column, which is 25 centimeters by 25 centimeters. Um, and that's about it for materials. Let's move on to tasks and costs.